life down at your feet You're the only one I need I turn to you and you are always there In trouble times it's you I see I put you first, that's all I need I humble all I am, all to you kids hope you guys are doing well teacher Jodash here long time never seen you guys and I hope to see you guys soon now we've been following the life of Paul and his great missionary journeys sharing the love of Jesus with the people of his day last week Paul was in Philippi where he and Silas had been arrested beaten and placed into prison but even in prison they praised God because of their example the jailer and his family became Christians. Now, even in that dark prison, Paul was still able to point people towards Jesus. How good is that? However, in today's story, Paul is now facing a different kind of challenge. He has now traveled to the land of Athens where the culture is very much different from the Jewish culture that Paul is used to. The people of Athens over there believe in many gods. They have made temples and shrines for all these gods they have invented. They have created 
So many gods that it wasn't even possible to keep track of them all. The Athenians even built an altar that to an unknown god in case they had missed any. Paul had a difficult task, trying to help these people understand that there is truly only one god who created both heaven and earth. These other gods were real. They were things that people had made up. So, but it is always possible to point the people to God. Let us watch a short video together on how Paul pointed the way to God. Let's go. Paul was concerned about the city of Athens. You know, maybe like my mom gets concerned when my room gets trash. Maybe something like that. Paul was concerned because Athens was full of false idols that the people had made. It made Paul sad to see people worshipping false gods. Paul went to the synagogue and talked with the Jews about Jesus. Every day in the marketplace, he would tell the good news about Jesus and the resurrection to anyone who was there. Some philosophers, oh, you don't know what a philosopher is? A, a philosopher are, are, were usually men who liked to think and reason and argue a lot. Anyway, some philosophers heard Paul teach. What is this babbler trying to say? They asked one another. He seems to be preaching about foreign gods. Other men wanted to hear more, so they invited Paul to speak at the Areopagus a place where people came to discuss important ideas. The men said, what you say sounds strange to us. We want to know what it means. Paul spoke respectfully. People of Athens, he began, I see you are very religious people. I even saw an altar you have for an unknown God. I can tell you about it. The God who made the world is Lord of heaven and earth. He does not live in places people make. He does not need anything from us because he is the one who gives life and everything else. He created the people of every nation and wants them to know him as God. We live and move and exist through him. We are his and he is not made of gold or silver or stone like man makes. Paul continued, God is alive and he commands all people everywhere to repent and turn away from disobeying him. Paul also explained that God sent Jesus. When Paul told how Jesus rose from the dead, some people made fun of Paul. Others wanted to hear more. Because of Paul taught the good news of Jesus, some men and women in Athens became followers of Jesus. Hi children. Today we looked at Paul's ministry in Athens. The people in Athens were very intrigued by this man called Paul, but at the same time they were confused because the God that this man Paul was talking about was very different than anything they understood. So Paul tried to point them to God in a way they can understand. You see the people in Athens had created an altar for a God called the unknown God. So Paul tried to point them to God by explaining to them that this unknown God can actually be known. He is the true God, the creator of all that we know and see. On that day, a great number of people gathered to hear what Paul had to say and how Paul was pointing the way to Jesus. But the Bible tells us that most of the people who gathered that day did not accept or rather rejected what Paul had to say. But you know what? Even in that difficult place, there were a few men and women who accepted Christ, who became Christians and began to put their faith in Jesus. Today, we are going to look at Kenya. Kenya is a country of 45 million population in the eastern part of Africa. The economy of Kenya is very unstable that even today half the population lives in poverty. 
the missionaries in Kenya are providing medical care for those who cannot afford it, education for children who has never been to school, as well as homes for orphans who don't have parents to take care of them. The number one religion in Kenya is Christianity, but this wasn't always the case though. At one time, Kenya was a lot like Athens. The people in Kenya had a lot of different kinds of God and worship different kinds of gods. But God sent missionaries to Kenya to point them to Jesus. Today, there are lots and lots of people in Kenya, unlike in Athens, who gave their lives to Jesus. But then again, there are still a lot of work to be done in Kenya. There are a small number of people who are not Christians and for some reason they hate Christians. They go around burning churches, beating up people, especially Christians, and even killing them at some point. Our first reaction is to hate them, right? But think about it. God loves everybody. God sent his son Jesus to die for everybody, even all these people in Kenya who hate Christians and who hurt them. So let's pray, children, that the people in Kenya who believe in Jesus and all the missionaries in Kenya who are pointing people to Jesus will be able to do their job well and point everybody in Kenya to Jesus and that one day, Everyone in Kenya will know the one true God. You can also point people to Jesus with your words and your service for others. As we saw with Paul in Athens, not everyone will accept Jesus, but some will. So that shouldn't stop you from sharing the good news. Every time someone accepts Jesus, the angels in heaven rejoice and for that to happen, we just have to point the way to Jesus. Remember, in Mark chapter 15, verse 16, it says, Go into the world and preach the good news to everyone. That is your memory verse for today. And I hope you will always remember that and keep that close to your heart. We love you all, children. Hi children, I'm teacher Sylvia and today I'm going to show you some logos and what they represent. So let's get started. I have over here some logos and I'm sure you can guess what they are or what they represent. Let's see, Microsoft and Windows, what do they represent? Computers and not just computers but software and the programming and everything that you need to use on the computer this is then we have a picture of an apple apple is also the same it's to do with computers with gadgets with iphones ipads you know the story is like this they asked why is there a bite in the apple and you know what is the answer steve jobs looked at the apple and he said let's put a bite in it because if without a bite People by might mistake it for a cherry. So that's how we got a bite in the apple. Then over here, we have BR, Baskin Robbins. Baskin Robbins is the most delicious ice cream. Well, almost one of the most delicious ice creams in the world. And there's a number there, 31. 31 represents the 31 delicious flavors that we can choose from. And here is a picture of Shell. Shell is petrol. When people see Shell, they think of petrol. And we all need petrol to fill up our cars. Then we have here a, long, a girl with long hair. And this represents coffee. Starbucks coffee. Uh, this one, I'm sure you all know. This is the Colonel. And this is KFC. And KFC represents yummy chicken, fried chicken which is a finger licking good and this is coca-cola okay let's look at these two uh, logos what do they represent can you guess what day it is 
Yes, the name is here, McDonald's. This used to be the old logo where they put the McDonald's there. But over uh, time, they have changed it, they have removed the name because everybody knows this logo. All children love to see this logo because they know that McDonald's is just around the corner. So it says, I'm loving it. Children, do you know that we can also be logos for Jesus Christ? We want people to, uh, we want to point people to Jesus. And the only way to point people to Jesus is to be logos for Jesus Christ. How do we do that? It's through our lifestyle. It's through our words, our actions. How we treat people, how do we talk to them, how do we respect people, how do we forgive those who have hurt us. These are all examples of being good logos for Jesus Christ. If we want to be uh, followers of Jesus Christ, we want to uh, we want people to see the glory and the goodness of Jesus. And that is why it is important that we project ourselves as good logos for Jesus Christ. So today's art lesson, we're going to do a logo. And this logo is to show others what it means to be a Christian, to be a follower of Christ. So are you excited to get started? So let's begin and we'll see what we come up with. Okay, children? Okay, children, let's start with the art and craft. First of all, you'll need a cardboard. Okay, you can use a plain piece of paper, but because I'm doing a fridge magnet, I'm using a cardboard so that the, the paper is thicker and firmer. Then what you do is you cut out a heart shape. Okay, so I've done it and I've used this pair of seed. You draw the heart and then you cut out. And this is what it looks like. I've done it bigger because it's uh, for clarity, it's easier to see on the uh, screen. But you can actually do a smaller one if you prefer. Okay, this is a cardboard. Then I use a marker and I color the cardboard with red. Why red? Because red represents love and it also represents the blood of Jesus. So after I've colored the whole heart shape with red color, then this is the cardboard. It has a flap here at the side here. So what I do is I cut out a small, two smaller pieces of paper, which I've done here like that to make it into a cross, okay? This is the other side of the cardboard box. So I've done a cross, and this cross, I'm going to actually tape it using double-sided tape to the heart. Uh, once the heart has been colored, I'll tape it, okay? The heart represents the love of Jesus. The cross represents the good news that Jesus died on the cross to save us and give us eternal life. And then the flap here, you cut out another small piece of paper and this is, guess what children? It looks like a book. Not just any book, but the Holy Bible. So this one, we're going to tape it onto the cross. Okay, using the double-sided tape. So you have the Bible. And in the Bible, you're going to write the scripture verse, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, which says, God has commanded us to go into the world to preach the good news to everyone. So the good news is that Jesus died on the cross to save us from sin, from hell. And we have eternal life with Him in heaven. Okay. Children, so this is, and then this is the magnet that you will cut out a small piece and put it at the back of the heart, like what I've done here, so that it can be a fridge magnet. 
and you, you can stick it onto the fridge. So after you've done this, this is what it looks like. The heart, red colour, the cross and the Bible with your memory verse written inside the Bible. So children, this is your logo. When people see this logo, it will remind them of what Jesus has done for us. And as followers of Christ, we are to go out to the world and preach the good news to everyone. And the good news is that Jesus died on the cross to save us from hell and so we might have eternal life. So children, did you enjoy your art and craft lesson just now? I can't wait to see your masterpiece. Until we meet again, be good, be healthy, stay safe, and bye! Let us bow in prayer. Dear God, give us the boldness and wisdom to point others to Jesus because He is the truth and living God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Before we came, everyone talked about how uh, everyone could, everyone has a gift to share, and I really wasn't sure if I had anything to contribute. Um, but my beard contributed to joy to children all over Nairobi. It was amazing. I, I never thought that I would welcome uh, countless hands running their fingers through my beard and the joy that it would bring to kids. These people have, like I said, little to nothing and they're so thankful for where they are in their life with God and um, if God and Jesus is all they have then they're happy with that. And I read a quote in one of the vans that said, um, it's better to be rich in God than rich in goods. And I think that just explains the Kenyan culture so much. They're just so happy to be able to have a relationship with God and to be a part um, of that community. Their pure joy and love for Jesus despite their circumstances. And that has taught me that when I go back in my worldly issues that you know I, I get consumed by are absolutely nothing for what they deal with every single day and they can still find the love of Jesus and still find that they can give everything up to God. And I know that will impact me every single day when I go back. And I'm excited that they have opened my eyes. I thought I was gonna come here and inspire them and instead, I came in here and they inspired me.
Lives have been transformed, a lot of lives are being ministered to and, and when you bring the teams and they go to these homes, they talk with these people, they pray with these people, they evangelize to them, these people are able to really see and experience the love of God through all the East Siders. You mean so much to us, we treasure our partnership, we treasure our friendship and may God bless you so much for being with us and doing this with us.